Hello everyone. We are here in the fourth video of our Quicksort series, where in our previous videos we have seen how Quicksort works and the problems that can be solved using the logic of Quicksort. So here in this fourth video of the series, we are going to see again two more problems that can be solved using the same logic of Quicksort partition algorithm. So let's get into the problem statements. The first problem we are going to see is sort array by parity. So the given input is an integer array A consisting of both odd and even numbers. And we have to return the even numbers first followed by the odd elements of the given array. So how are we going to solve this problem? If we are trying to solve this using a brute force method, then we'll have one more external result array which start to save all the even numbers first that is we start iterating the given array 3 is an odd number and then the next number is an even number so it put the even number first and then the next element will be the next even number it encounters so once all even numbers are traversed again start traversing the array and start getting the odd numbers now the odd numbers will be saved and then if one more odd number is there finally it will save in the last position and then the iteration ends this is going to take an extra space of the result array and then twice the iteration of the given array so how do we do it efficiently in linear time and constant space to do that our quick sort comes for help we are going to use our partition logic to work on this problem and sort even and odd numbers separately so i'm not going to explain how this partition algorithm is working because we have seen enough in our previous videos how the algorithm actually works and iteration works in the algorithm if you are not similar with that concept please go and check the link given in description and come back to this problem so now we have pointer i and j and every time j encounters an even number it is going to swap the numbers according to our partition algorithm so here the pivot we are going to set is even integer that is any number which is going to give us reminder zero is going to be our even number so we are going to swap this number with the first encounter of odd number so first it is an odd number it is an even number so swap happens so the numbers become four three two one now i and j comes here so now again it is an even number it is an odd number so, so the swap happens so 4 2 3 1 and further it iterates till the last to find no more even numbers left and return this array so before getting into the coding part let's see a second algorithm and we are going to be amazed how both the programs are having the same code and will be solved using the same logic so let's go to our problem statement two. So the second problem we are going to see here is move zeros. So we are given an input of an integer array nums, which is consisting of positive and positive numbers and zeros. So now we are going to put all the positive numbers without changing its relative order towards first and then put rest of the zeros at the end of the array. So the challenge here is to do it in, in place without making the copy of the array. So how are we going to do it? So for this problem, again, if it is going to be solved using brute force, we need an extra array to push all the positive numbers first and then the trailing zeros. But the challenge here is to solve this in constant space. So how to do that? Again, our partition algorithm comes to help. We are going to have our pointer i and j where we are going to set our pivot element as zero so this is going to help us to push all the elements greater than pivot towards left and all the elements less than pivot towards right according to our partition logic so we are going to set our pivot and check every time if our value at j is going to be greater than zero then swap if not move ahead and iterate so let's see how it is going to work 
So now we are having a pointer i and j. Every time j encounters an element which is greater than 0, then swap it with the occurrence of 0. So now 1 is a greater element than 0, so swap happens. So the number becomes 1, 0, 0, 3, 12. Now our i is at 0, j is here at another 0. 0 is not less than 0, so moving to the next number which is 3. 3 is greater than 0, so swap it with the position of i. So now the array becomes, so now our array pushed 3 to the second position and 0 to the third position, fourth position. So now it's time to check whether j is less than 0. No, it is equal to 0. So moving j to our last element, which is 12, which is greater than 0. So now it has to swap it with the occurrence of 0. So now the actual array is going to become 1, 3, 12, 0, 0. So finally, our result has arrived by putting all the zeros towards the end of the array and putting all the positive numbers towards the starting of the array without changing its relative order. So now it's time to see the code for both the problems. So here is the first problem we saw sort array by parity. If you observe the code, it is very similar to the partition code which we saw in our first video. We just have the pointer j and i. j starts with the starting index and i is gonna scan through the array. And we gonna set our pivot as an even number. That is if we see any even number, then I trade J and swap. So at the end of the result, it is going to swap all the elements. It, it is going to pull all the even elements towards left and all the odd elements towards right. So here, we just going to use the same code in move zeros as well. So move zeros is also having the same code which are without any change. Here we're going to have the same pointer j is equal to minus 1 and i is going to scan the array and we are setting our pivot element is not is equal to 0. So if it is not equal to 0 then I trade j and swap happens. So finally we got a end result. So the code is very similar. The idea is very similar. It is just using the logic of quicksort partition algorithm to perform the operations. So if you really understand what actually quicksort and how it works, you can solve many problems using the same piece of code. So wait for some more videos with same logic and we can solve even tougher problems using quicksort. So if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you.